Good day class! Now we will discuss about correct good compounding practice. So let's first differentiate what is manufacturing and compounding. When we say pharmaceutical manufacturing, it is a large-scale production of drugs or drug products for distribution and sale. When we say compounding, it is a professional preparation of prescription for a specific patient as part of the traditional practice of pharmacy. So the difference between them is that when we say manufacturing, it is a large-scale preparation of drugs that is done in a pharmaceutical establishment or firm. When we talk about compounding, it is a small-scale or extemporaneous preparation of drugs that is um, intended for specific patients that is done in the community pharmacy or in the hospital pharmacy. So we have already an idea what is current good manufacturing practice and let's now focus on the current good compounding practice. So what are the reasons for compounding? So first, many patients need drug dosages or strengths that are not commercially available. So there are some drugs in the market that are only available in adult dose. So through compounding, pharmacies can prepare doses for special patients such as pedia and geriatric patients. So another reason, many patients need dosage forms such as suppositories, oral liquids, or topicals that are not commercially available. Again, some drugs in the market are not available in all dosage forms. So there are drugs that are just available in tablets or in syrup. So through compounding, pharmacies can prepare um, drugs that are not uh, available in this dosage forms. Next, many pa patients are allergic to excipients in commercially available products. So we all know that every person has an individual response to products. So there are some who are allergic to specific excipients that are found in the product. So through compounding, pharmacies can remove or disregard those excipients that can cause allergic to patients. Next, children's medications must be prepared as liquids, flavored to enhance compliance, and prepared in alternative dosage form, such as lozenges, gumdrops, popsicles, and lollipops. So we know that children's are one of those chains that have problems in adherence with medications. So through compounding, we pharmacies can add flavors or improve the palatability of drugs for these patients to take and to adhere with the medications. Next, some medications are not very stable and require preparation and dispensing every few days. They are not suitable to be manufactured products. So a very good example of this is the antibiotics. We know that antibiotics are subjected for hydrolysis when they are introduced with Water. That is the reason why antibiotics are not available in liquid preparations in market. So what we do in the pharmacy, available product for suspensions are being reconstituted to prepare a suspension. So another reason is many physicians desire to deliver products in innovative ways and pharmacists can work with them to solve medication problem. So pharmacists as a medicine expert, we know about the properties, about the stability of drugs, so we can help physicians when, when it comes to the medication problems. Next, most products are not available for veterinary patients and must be compounded. So, there are some drugs that are not available for veterinary patients or for animal doses. So, through compounding, we pharmacies can make doses um, available for animals or for veterinaries. Next, so home health care and the treatment of an increasing number of patients at home have resulted in many community pharmacies and home health care pharmacies preparing sterile products. So we know that sterile products are one of the drugs that have a strict standards when it comes to its preparation. So as a pharmacist through compounding, we can prepare sterile products not only in the hospital but also in home health care pharmacies. Next, hospice care has resulted in some 
approaches to pain management and higher concentrations and combination drugs that are now used. So the current practice of pharmacy allow the combination of drugs. Example are the chemotherapy and the pain management or the PCA that we already know. So through compounding, um, we pharmacists can provide these drugs or these preparations to different or specific types of patients. Let's proceed now to the content of the current good compounding practice. So the first part is the general provisions wherein it provides two important definitions, the compounding and the manufacturing. So according to the definition, compounding means the preparation of components into a drug product. So there are two purposes or reasons why we are doing compounding. First is as a result of practitioners or physicians prescription drug order. Second is for purposes of research, teaching, or chemical analysis. So in short, not for sale purposes siya. Next, for the meaning of manufacturing, it means the production, preparation, propagation, conversion, or processing of a drug or device, either directly or indirectly, by extraction from substances of natural origin or independently by means of chemical or biological synthesis. So again, when we talk about manufacturing, we are not only preparing drugs, but we are also preparing devices. So it also includes packaging or repackaging of drug or device or the labeling or relabeling of container of a drug or device for resale by pharmacists, practitioner, or other persons. Okay, let's go now to the next part, the organization and personnel. It discusses the responsibilities of pharmacists and other personnel engaged in compounding. So, only personnel authorized by responsible pharmacists shall be in immediate vicinity of a drug compounding operation. So, we know at first hand that pharmacies are the authorized and or responsible for compounding. And it should be done within the drug compounding area or the operation wherein there are control and measures applied. Next is the drug compounding facilities. So, this describes the areas that should be set for compounding, either sterile or not. So, in pharmacy, we are not just preparing non-sterile products. We are also preparing sterile products that require strict compliance in CGCP. So, special attention is required for age pharmaceuticals and for products requiring special precautions to minimize contamination such as penicillin. So, drug products that require special precautions in compounding. So, example of which are the rage pharmaceuticals and the chemotherapies since these are hazardous and reactive. Aside from that, we also have the antibiotics such as penicillin. So, when compounding these types of product, there should be special precautions and measures should be applied. Next, equipment must be of appropriate design, adequate size, and suitably located to facilitate operation for its intended use and for its cleaning and maintenance. If mechanical or electronic equipment is used, controls must be in place to ensure proper performance. So in both manufacturing and compounding, we always require equipment to be ensured for them to provide proper performance. Next are the controls of components and drug products, containers, and closures. So this part describes the packaging requirement for compounded products. So when we say packaging system, this refers not only to closure uh, but also to container. So it could be either closure, container, or closure and container. So according to the USP, a container is that which holds the article and or may be in direct contact with the drug article. So the container, including the closure, should be clean and dry before it filled with the drug and must not interact physically or chemically with the drug. So a drug product cannot be called as a finished product if there is no container. So, container is a very important part of drug product. Thus, they should be properly cleaned, sanitized, and dry before drug is filled since they are in direct contract with the drug article. So, this is to avoid any interaction physically and chemically with the drug. 
so we have here the types of container so we have primary container which are also known as immediate container has direct contact with the drug example of which are bottles blister packs which is for tablet and the bottles for the syrups or other liquid preparations next secondary containers so these are containers that enclose the primary container so they are not indirectly contact with the drug so this uh, the purpose of the secondary container is for market presentation so example are folding cartoons or unit box next is the tertiary container so tertiary container encloses the secondary container so example of this are corrugated boxes so these are those big boxes uh, that contain a lot of um, unit packages so USP classifies container according to protection ability, quality yield, and material use. So let's first discuss classification of container according to protection ability. So first type is the well-closed container. They are minimally acceptable container that protects the contents from extraneous solids and from loss of the drug. So basically these containers are intended for solid dosage forms. Tightly closed, protects the contents from contamination by extraneous liquids, solids, or vapors from loss of the article. And from efflorescence, the liquescence or evaporation. It is also capable of tight re-closure. So, tightly closed container offers more protection than well-closed container. So, aside from protecting the drug from solids, Tightly closed container also protect the drugs from liquids or vapors. So they are intended for materials that are efflorescent, the liquescence, and hygroscopic. So it is also capable of tight reclosure. So when we say the liquescents, these are materials that absorb moisture and dissolves. So example of this material is, say for example, the salt. But we know that when salt is introduced with water, what will happen? So it dissolves. So when we say hygroscopicity naman, these are materials that absorb moisture but do not dissolve. So very good example of this is the sugar, the ba? When we introduce water in the sugar, it does not dissolve. Okay, so it forms a big compact of sugars. Another type of container is the hermetic container. So... It is the most excellent and comes to protection because it is impervious to air or any other gas. So it can protect the drug from gas. Sterile hermetic containers generally hold preparations intended for injection or parenteral administration. So hermetic containers are usually uh, the container used for parenteral and for injection dosage forms or preparations. Okay, so another type is according to quality health. So we have two types in this classification. First is the single unit, which holds a quantity of drug intended as a single dose. And when opened, cannot be resealed. So when we say single unit, it is just intended for single administrations. In short, they should be discarded after opening them. So, it does not have bacteriostatic agent and the USP limit is 1000 ml. So, always remember, single unit has no bacteriostatic agent or any preservative used since uh, they are only for single use purposes and the USP limit is 1000 ml. So, example of this is the fusion sealed ampules. Diba? We have the ampules. We also have the prefilled syringes and the cartridges. We also have your IV fluids. Next is the multiple unit container. So it is a hermetic container that permits withdrawal of successive portions of contents without changing the strength or endangering the quality of the remaining portion. These are containers that allow multiple withdrawal for administration. So, this requires bacteriostatic agent and the USP limit is only 30 ml. So, in multiple unit, will limit the volume, okay? And it also requires bacteriostatic agents or preservatives. So, examples are your vials. Another is the classification of containers based on materials. So, first is glass. So, glass is the most widely used container 
So, some of the advantages of glass, it is strong and rigid, adequate moisture protection, and is economical. So, as compared with the other type of material used for container, a lot of advantages can have from glass. So, next, the, the disadvantages naman, it is fragility. When we say pr fragility, prone to broke or damage. When we say absorption, that is the transfer of container ingredients to the drug. So, it is also subject for leaching. So, when we say leaching, the transfer of drug element or ingredients to the container. So, vice versa sila ang absorption and the leaching. We also have the plastics. So, advantages of plastic. So, they are lightweight, of course, and resistance to impact. So, even though ma-fall siya ang container, so, hindi siya yung ma-damage or ma-broke. So, versatility in container design. So, nami siya for aesthetic and is used for ophthalmic. So, we know that ophthalmic containers should be squeezable. Also, for nasal sprays, the same and for lotion. However, disadvantages of plastic, it is prone to permeability. And transmission of light, so, ga transmit ang light sa plastic container. Leaching also of the polymer additives. So, another type of material used for containers are the foils, films, and laminates. So, they are more commonly used for decoration, flexibility, heat sealability, and see-through property. So, example of dosage forms that uses these types of material are our tablets, diba? So, they are in blister packs. Next is the rubber. So, usually used as closure for vials. Then, the metallic container, which is for aerosol container, collapsible tube for ointments. Most commonly used for collapsible tube for ointments is the aluminum gate, no? So, let's go to the type of glasses. The type 1 is the highly resistant borosilicate glass. Type 2 is the treated soda lime glass. Type 3 is the soda lime glass. And type NT is the general purpose soda lime glass. So, always remember that type 1, 2, and 3 are intended for parenteral products. So, however, type NT is not intended for parenteral. So, pwede siya magamit for other drug dosage forms such as tablet, um, liquids, preparations, so except lang for parenteral preparations. Let's go now to the types of plastic. So, if we have types of glasses, we also have types of plastic. So, types of plastics are classified into two, thermosqueeze and thermosets. So, when we say thermosqueeze, these are the versatile and flexible type of plastic. So, usually, ginagamit niya for mga ophthalmics, lotions, and nasal sprays. Next, for thermosets naman, firm and rigid. Let's proceed now to the polymers of plastic. First is the polypropylene with the recent identification code number, which is 5. So, highly temperature resistant na sila, meaning ma-resist nila ang heat. And then, they can be autoclave. Okay? Next is the polyethylene or the PE cannot be autoclave. So, hindi ni sila pwede ma-subject to heat or high um, temperature. So, there are, there are two classification of polyethylene. We have high density polyethylene. They are hard thermoset. So, they are for solid dosage form. And we have the low density polyethylene. So, medyo wala ni siya ginagamit for pharmaceutical purposes. Next is the polyvinyl chloride or the PVC. So, recent identification to code niya 3. Rigid and clear, useful in blister packaging. So, usually ginagamit ni siya for the packaging of our tablets. Okay, so, sa blister packs. Next is the polyethylene triphthalate or the PET. So, recent identification code or number 1. So, used for beverages. We also have your amorphous polyethylene triphthalate glycol or APET. And the polyethylene terephthalic glycol, PETG. So, they are transparent and luster and sterilized with gamma radiation. And the last is the polystyrene, which is 6. So, as you can see guys, may mga number ang polymers of plastic. So, if you have here, or kung may ara da any plastic container, kung may makita ka mga number, may meaning na siya. So, kung 5 na siya, meaning that plastic is a polypropylene. Okay, so... Usually, may ara ka mo mineral water. So, ang mineral water naton is 
pet. So, number one ng nabutanga recent identification code. Okay, next. So, containers uh, with safety packaging. So, we have three types. The child-resistant packaging. So, one that is significantly difficult for children under 5 years of age to open or to obtain a harmful amount of its content within a reasonable time and that is not difficult for normal adult to use properly. So, ang mga child-resistant packaging is usually ginagamit for drugs that are very hazardous and very harmful. So, example of the child-resistant packaging is the latch top, align the arrows, press down and turn, squeeze and turn. Next is the tamper evident packaging. So, must be turned or broken to reach the product. So, we have already discussed this in our previous discussion in the CGMP and we have a different examples for tamper evident packaging and the protection it offers so the by example dito is a tape seal shrink seal and the plastic seal so another safety packaging is the compliance packaging so assist the compliance of patients to take their medications on schedule so ang purpose naman niya sa compliance packaging is for adherence of the patients okay so drug compounding control so written procedures should be followed to ensure that the finished products are of proper identity, strength, quality, and purity as labeled. So, compounding monographs that provide a tested, uniform formulation with valid beyond use dating is embedded in the United States pharmacopoeia. So, of course, when we do compounding, we also follow steps and written procedures. So, most commonly, ginagamit natin ang USP as our guide for compounding different dosage forms with specific drugs. So, let's go now to the labeling control of excess products and records and reports. So, it describes the various records and reports that are required under these guidelines. So, when we say label, refers to a display of written, printed, or graphic matter on the immediate container of any Article. So, any written or printed or graphic matter nga makita nato sa drug product that is called as label. When we say labeling material, it refers to the label and other written, printed or graphic matter upon any item or any of its containers or wrappers. So, to accompanying any such item. So, magamaka labeling materials, these are materials used for label. So, labels and labeling materials are the primary sources of information for consumers. After we have prepared the drug, it is very important to label them. So, what are the provisions in labeling compounded drugs? So, in dispensing to the patients, drug products in unit dose are products which are not in their original containers but transferred to small bottles, tin cans, boxes, plastics and or paper envelopes and the like, the pharmacist shall place eligibly the required drug outlets label the following information. So, kung mag-compound ta, of course, we should attach a label. So, what is the minimum requirement or the minimum information that should be found in our label? First is the name of the patient. So, diba we are compounding for a specific type of patient. So, dapat may name of the patient. May generic name of the drug and the brand name if may brand name siya. Manufacturer. The dosage strength. The expiry date. The direction for use and the name of the pharmacist. So, all of this information should be seen dapat sa aton niya compounded drugs. So, for the storage, so product must be stored in proper condition to ensure its stability. So, the labeling of each product includes the desired condition of storage. So, we should also put a storage condition. So, very important. Asya, di ba? All available drugs so market, may aragin na siya storage condition. And we should follow those storage condition. So, i-include naman na siya sa aton nga labeling. So, when we say cold place or cold temperature, what does it mean? So, it, it is any temperature not exceeding 8 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so refrigerator is cold place where temperature is maintained at 2 to 8 degree Celsius. Freezer is cold place where temperature is maintained at 25 to 10 degree Celsius. Okay, so again, uh, maghambal ka cold, may duwan na siya ka-type, either refrigerator or freezer. So, kis a ah, ginaspecify na sa storage condition, kis a ah, wala. So, kung wala man kinaspecify, mamintain mo lang dapat na hindi na ma-exit sa 8 degree Celsius ang storage condition sa imong mga drug. Next is cool. So, any temperature between 8 degrees to 15 degree Celsius. So, um, na siyang cool na ito ha, 8 to 15. Room temperature naman, the temperature prevailing in working area. So, kung ano ang temperature sa inyong working area or sa pharmacy, that is the room temperature. However, may arata another term nga kiss ama interchange to sila, which is the controlled room temperature. So, magamit tayo controlled room temperature. It encompasses the usual environment of 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, but also allows for temperature variations between 15 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So, Ang usual git na to na controlled room temperature is 20 to 50 to 25 degrees Celsius. But ginaalaw man to ang variation 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. However, kung naka-specify man nga dapat 20 to 25, of course you should follow that one. So kung wala, so pwede ta mag-vary. So 15 to 30 degree Celsius. Okay, so this is the temperature which is found in pharmacies, hospitals and drug warehouses. When we say warm, any temperature between 30 degrees Celsius and 40 degree Celsius. Okay, excessive heat is above 40 degree Celsius. So, um, guys, in our pharmacy, it is very important to have our thermometer. So, may ito dapat thermometer for the environment and thermometer for our drugs, specifically sa mga refrigerated items na to. Mga vaccines, mga insulins, okay, Okay, so that's all for our current good compounding practice. So hopefully you have learned from this lecture. Thanks.